as well. So you can get stacks of animation from me uh, if you so desire, and that's going to be part of the auction. We're really excited about it. It's a really nice kind of dense little body of work, so uh, I'm pretty happy about that. And then the other thing I'm going to let Nick, let Nick chime in on is we're starting, um, we're actually going to be going into production on Snow Bear uh, next month in July. And what I mean by that is, because yes, we've been working on Snow Bear for years now, but it's all been pre-production. We've all been, we've been getting it ready. I've been storyboarding it. We're actually going to start making it where I actually start animating it uh, next month. And so uh, we're going to start a Discord channel where you guys can tune in. Do you want to talk about that, Nick? Yes. I'm also still working on sound. I was going to go ahead and start drawing first. Okay. Let's go get some echo, and I'll come back to that in a little bit. I'm not sure why we're getting that much. It's not just one mic. So. We didn't have that last week. I'm not sure what, what we did differently this week. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Bear with us. We'll get it. Bear with us. What are you going to draw? So I've got this little cub, this little lion cub that I wanted to, I wanted to draw, and um, I've got a little, a little bit of reference right here. So you can see, there's my reference there. There it is there, and it's this little lion cub that we we photographed when we were in uh, in Kenya a few years ago, and I just love this little guy, and. Um, and also, it's, uh, was it today? It may have been today or uh, either today or um, yesterday, I think. It's, it's this week for sure. That uh, it's the 28th anniversary of The Lion King being released. Released in June of 1994. And I worked on The Lion King. I created Nala. And so I thought, hey, it might be fun to do a little lion cub today for you. I doubt it's the mic position. No, but it's because they're super stretch. Is it too sound far away from the mic? Oh, I see. It's not echoing. I think they fixed the echo. Now it's the positioning of the mic. Okay. You created Nala? I did create Nala, yes. I I created, I worked on The Lion King back in, I started it in 1992. And uh, we I worked on it for a little over a year. I created Nala during that time, young Nala. And um, and it was one of the, one of my favorite that time, experiences young in animation was working on The Lion King. I absolutely loved working on that film. And Nala was a fun little character to create. My daughter at the time was only, she was only about two, how old was she? She was, when I started, she was three. She was three years old. And, uh, and she had these big eyes, big, you know, little toddler eyes. And so I just, I kind of modeled her. I modeled Nala after my daughter's eyes. I always tell that story. And, uh, the other thing I always tell everybody is that my daughter now, my daughter's, uh, she's going to be 33 in just a couple of weeks, in a few weeks. And, um, but she still tells everybody she's Nala. <laughs> Pretty cute. I like it. How often do you go live? We go live every Friday. And uh, on TikTok, it's more, it, it's more interspersed. We don't really have a schedule yet. We're going to be working on that. But every friday for sure but we might be going you know i might, I might do inter you know intermittent ones for tiktok do you have a favorite color palette that you use i do well i have a i do have a specific color palette that i use it's i don't know that it's my favorite but it's what i've been i've used for a long time and it just serves me well it's um it's basically i use two blues cerulean and ultramarine and then I use uh, like olive green, sap green. I, my earth tones, I use ochre, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. Um, and then my greens, I use olive green, sap green. Uh, and then uh, as we go into the yellows, I use cadmium yellow uh, and lemon yellow. And then I use um, 
Uh, where are we going now? From yellow into the oranges, a cad orange, and then I use cad red, uh, and then a lizard crimson, and then where am I going now? Uh, into the violets. Um, oh, and I also use um, uh, Payne's gray, and then uh, one violet. Is that is that the same pencil you were using last time? The Mitsubishi yeah. 10B. Yep, this is the Mitsubishi 10B. You got it. And I had a question that's kind of funny, worded funny. What other characters did you create in the 1900s? In the 1900s? Oh my gosh, I guess it was the 1900s. <laughs> I guess this person was born in the 2000s, so to them it's the 1900s. Oh my God, you just made me feel ancient. So you were lead animator. On oh, hold on, let me, let me answer that oh, question okay. real quick. I am... Um, I, uh, I created Raja the Tiger from Aladdin. I helped to animate Na uh, uh, Princess Jasmine. Mark Henn was the uh, was the lead animator on Princess Jasmine. But I helped him out. And then uh, um, I also created Yao from Mulan and all the ghosts, the ancestor ghosts from Mulan. Created all of them. So there you go. Question, did you work with Donald Towns on Brother Bear? Some of those backgrounds feels like his art backgrounds, and they're super amazing. No, the, all the backgrounds, um, one of the artists in our group at Disney, his name is J.G., he's a Chinese artist, uh, is a Chinese artist. And um, his natural painting style was that of the backgrounds because we, I, I bought a painting from him, and I just loved his his background style both my co-director and myself and so we asked him to teach the background department to paint like him and that became the style of the film so that's how the the backgrounds came to be it was uh, all based on the art of jg twitch question uh was brother bear your last movie or did you work on others after that um I have worked on others after that. Um, some of them, most of them didn't get made. Um, it's uh, it's just part of the business. And you work on a lot of films that don't get made. Um, Brother Bear was the last major, uh, like Disney style film that I worked on that got made. Although I, I very little, very, very little helped out with uh, 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 Wolf Walkers, which was recently released on uh, Apple TV. And nominated for it. And it was also nominated for an Academy Award, directed by Tom Moore and oh his name's escaping me. I'm sorry. Um and um I also worked on a few Paramount projects. I worked on uh a little bit of Ferdinand the Bull for Blue Sky. I worked on, you know, little bits and pieces of other projects. Uh but um but as far as me directing anything, no, I haven't done anything other than you know some commercial work since then did you work on beauty and the beast at all i did i was one of the animators of the beast i um it was one of my i was young i was uh 22 years old and um i i'd been in the industry for about three years at that point and uh, Glenn Keane, who was the who was the supervising animator of the Beast, he happened to be my mentor when I trained as an animator, and so he asked me to come in and be part of the crew to animate the Beast, and it was a really great honor to be able to do that, and so I did, and um, and it was just it was awesome. It was really a great experience, and uh, you know, I've always loved drawing animals. The beast was right in there because he was a mixture of so many different animals. Um, and uh, and Disney was great in the fact that I was able to carry that love of drawing animals that I've always had right into my animation, my work. What's your favorite animals to draw? Do you have a preference? I love big cats. I love bears. Any kind of big dramatic animal, elephants. You know, African wildlife is always huge for me. Um, I just, I love 
I love all animals. I, I mean, I can draw, I don't care. I could draw a worm and enjoy it. But, um, but there's, you know, the big dramatic animals are my favorites. Well, what I'm using right now here, you can see I've got this big white piece of, it looks like a pencil. This is actually a paper stump and it's just compressed paper shaped into a kind of this pencil. And it allows me, especially with soft graphite, like with what I'm using now, it allows me to soften the graphite and turn it into a very soft tone. And so I can go through and it gives me lots and lots of control as far as creating value. Value is light and dark. When we're talking in art terms, when I'm talking about value, if you hear an artist talking about the value, they're not talking about the, the, the monetary value of their work. They're talking about light and dark. It's a light value or a dark value. That's, that's the term we use. Got a long question here from YouTube, but I'm going to go ahead and summarize it. They actually wrote it in eight parts, but I'm just going to. Holy moly. I'm going to condense this. Um, I'm a high functioning person with autism that lives in Minneapolis. I planned on going to college here recently in, in my local school, but I found out that they don't offer traditional animation. Do I need a college degree to learn traditional animation? You do not need a college degree to learn traditional animation. And actually, as far as learning, you can learn traditional animation anywhere. Usually the question is, do you need a college degree in order to get a job working in traditional animation? And the answer that, to that is no as well. Um, I never got my degree. I don't have a degree. And I've been in the animation industry for 35 years. And I worked for Disney for 21 years, all without a degree. So the myth out there of needing a degree in order to get a job, at least in the art world and the animation world, is completely false. You do not need a degree. Now, the other side of that is some people work better going to college, working around like-minded people, and I totally understand that. But right now, part of what's happening in the, in the college industry and in the education industry is that you know, tuitions have just skyrocketed. And I personally just can't support that kind of inflation when, you know, a college tuition is $51,000 a year in some cases. And um, when you can get the exact same information online for free. Now, granted, no, you don't have somebody teaching it the same way. You don't, you're not learning with other students, that sort of thing. You're not being graded uh, and you're learning at your own pace and all of that. Um, but I got to tell you, when you when you're talking about, once again, you know, free or, or deeply, deeply discounted, like what we have at our website. I know I sound like a commercial, but I'm, I'm pretty passionate about this kind of stuff when it comes to, you know, people being charged that amount of money. And so many people will spend that money and never end up in the industry. That really bugs me too. So, um, no, you don't need a degree. You can get a lot of training online uh, through websites, through YouTube, through lots of different avenues uh, and never have to fork out that 51,000 or 40,000 or 60,000 or whatever it might be. Um, you can do it much more cheaply and get the training that you need. There's my, there's my, I said my piece. Ski Womp from TikTok says, I love you, Mr. Blade. I love you. You have been my whole inspiration. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Portraits and take portraits. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, this isn't quite the same as doing portraits, but part of the way I got myself through college is I did I did caricatures. You know, like like what you see people doing at the parks and like stuff. At birthday parties and stuff? Yeah, I did per birthday parties, lots and lots of bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. There's a big Jewish community in Sarasota, Florida, where I went to college, and so I did a lot of Bar mitzvahs while I was there, and it was funny because um, the community was somewhat small, I guess, because I would go from one bar mitzvah to the next, and I would do I would draw all the same kids. It was funny; they all got to know me, and I got to know them. Ryan on YouTube asks: Do you try to avoid touching the paper with your fingers to avoid oil, etc.? Yes. I always wash my hands before I start as well. 
And I wash my hands with dish soap, not, not hand soap. I wash it with dish soap because dish soap cuts grease. And so it gets rid of the grease on my fingers. How do you do this? How do I do it? I do it by doing it a lot. I've been drawing, I've been drawing for 50 years. Literally, I've been drawing for 50 years. I'm 54. I started drawing actually even before I was four years old. I, I started drawing, and um, I started getting art lessons from my mother, who was an artist. She would give me little lessons by the time I was about three. I remember her teaching me how to look at light and shadow, and she taught me you shading and shadow when I was about seven years old. YouTube question. Is a director's work more organizational or creative? It's both. It's, it's uh, from a writing standpoint, um, we're deeply, deeply involved in writing. Um, because I'm also an artist director, I'm deeply involved uh, in design. I, matter of fact, I did a lot of the initial designs because I had a specific way that I saw the characters and the look of the movie. Um, and then, you know... Directing is just, there's a lot of different hats you have to wear. I've got to, in, in some ways, even though we have a producer, I got to play the producer role because I got to keep track of budget. And uh, so I want to make sure that we're not going over in budget. Are you okay on your back? Okay. You look like you're in pain. No, thank you. Yeah. And uh, so, um, yeah, so it's it, it's both. It's, it's both creative and... Uh, uh, and artistic. And that's one of the reasons I love, um, or both creative. It's both, uh, um, kind of whatever you said in the, in the thing. Sorry, I'm trying to draw and, and talk at the same time right now, and I'm having a hard time. But, um, it's, uh, I really like, I love the problem solving, especially when it comes to budget issues. A lot of people don't like that part of it, but I like, I like being given a certain amount of money and making that money go as far as I can make it go on the screen. It's kind of what we're doing with Snow Bear. It's, uh, you know, you only have so much to, to spend, but you want to make the best film you can with the, with the money you've got. And so you get in there and you just Twitch. have a great time with it. Twitch question. When you started to direct, did you have time to animate or draw, or were you just giving critiques at that point? At that point, for a little while, I was just giving critiques. But as things, as the machine gets rolling, as the movie gets going, and people, you know, kind of get into their groove, it gave me time to actually do some animation for the movie. So I was able to do animation for the film. Martin Berger on Facebook. Asked, Martin Berger. Not one, Martin Berger. One question about that Mitsubishi 10B pencil, Aaron, uh, you're using. Where do they hide the engine and how do you drive it? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be very, very tiny. So tiny. Um, Skittles MD on TikTok says, I have trouble with eye placement. Do you have any advice? Yes. Well, first of all, a, a lot of people have trouble with eye placement because they're not, they're, they don't quite understand the anatomy of how the eyes sit inside the head. So that's part of it. Study that. And so that you understand, you know, there's a bridge in the nose. There's, you know, the eyes actually sit inside the skull. They don't sit on the outside of the skull. A lot of people draw it that way. Even though we kind of intuitively know that, obviously, um, people will, will get stuck not drawing it that way. But um, it's a lot of that. It's, uh, you know... Draw center lines on your on your on your faces too. That'll help with getting symmetry. Jade B. Inc. says, Mr. Blaze. Yeah. Were you familiar with Pappy Land aside from Disney? Pappy Land? I don't know. I no, I don't know what Pappy Land is. Maybe it was like a Disneyland. Papillon. I like the movie Papillon. Here you go. No. So, um, how do you find the motivation to animate every day? I don't animate every day. That's the beauty of what I do. I draw. I do create art every day, and I, and I have the motivation to do that because I just love to do it. But um, you know what I do with, especially with my teaching, is one day I'm 
doing this. I'm drawing with a pencil. The next day, I'm doing digital painting. Another day, I'm animating. Um, the one thing that is going to come up that I will have to kind of step into my my old shoes of kind of working uh, on a project, and that is, you know, it's setting goals and, and working until you get it done. You know, when I start on Snow Bear uh, in the next couple of weeks, you know, that's that's a long commitment. I'm animating the entire thing. Uh, so we we actually worked it out, and it's going to be it's about twelve thousand drawings I have to get done for the animation for all the animation. It's ten minutes of animation. So um, and we've given ourselves ten months to get it done. So uh, that's about a month of animation. Of, of, you know, crispy cactus on tw Twitch yeah. noticed. So yeah. Dustin's not here today, huh? Dustin has a very uh, bad throat infection he doesn't have covid he's not sick with covid but he is he's got he's under the weather today he called in sick and we at creature art teacher especially for our relatives and our and our spawn don't force them to work when they're sick um do you mind aaron if we try a quick little audio test i want to try to switch back to the lapel mic and see if i can get a vedanta to use your mic so she's got a mic on the camera sure uh, bear with us, people. It'll take just a moment. So I'm just going to keep drawing. And I'll keep talking. Yeah. Is it on? No, not yet. Okay. Do you draw things other than animals? Oh. I draw everything. I draw all kinds of stuff. I mostly draw animals. But I do, matter of fact, the... Um, the... Uh, the course that I have coming out is a course on creature design. So I do, which I guess is animals, but it's, it's made up creatures. Um, I don't do a lot of, uh, I do people as well. I don't do a lot of mech stuff. Matter of fact, I don't do any of that. Yeah, don't talk for one second. I'm just going to try to get about to step on the mic. So what I'm trying to do now is <clears throat> all the fur kind of flows back like so. So I wanted I'm kind of laying down a tone and then I can go back in with my pencil. So I lay down, I, I do a little bit of scrubbing. I get it all to come back like this. TikTok saying they can hear just fine, but that's because it's through your phone and not. Yeah, it's just open mic. Like, oh, it's an open mic night. Different setup, yeah. Uh, okay. Elaine asks, uh, I bought the Science of Creature Design by Terrell Whitlatch on your recommendation, and I read your forward. Do you two meet up sometimes? We do. It's been a while. It's been a while, but um, uh, I haven't seen Terrell since before COVID. Actually, the last time I saw Terrell was at Lightbox uh, in Pasadena a couple of years ago. And uh, we're, hopefully we're going to get to see each other again because we're going to be at COVID. Or be at COVID. We're going to be at Lightbox. We're going to be at COVID. We're going to be at COVID. Um, it was 2019, I believe, right? It was the first yeah. year yep. that they did it. The only year they did it live, actually, right? Yeah. And Eric wants to know on Twitch, have you seen the movie The Ghost in the Darkness? Oh, I have. Yeah, very, I've seen it several times. I've actually been to that area. That's Savo. It's just outside Nairobi, Kenya. Based on a true story. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, another Twitch question. Uh, do you believe that someone should be a master of anatomy before animating? If yes, should someone study drawing anatomy for a couple years before getting into animation? No. No and no. And the, uh, I mean, you can, it, it helps to understand anatomy. 
but I would never consider myself a master of anatomy and I've been doing animation for 35 years. I feel like I'm pretty good at it. And, you know, but you know, the idea of having to be a master of something before you can do something else is kind of crazy. So when you draw an animal, where do you usually begin? I like to start with the head and then I, I kind of work my way around. Um, if I'm doing this one's going to turn out to be basically a portrait. Let me see if I'm zoomed in enough on, on there. Yeah, let me. I can zoom I can in. Check. Yeah, we can zoom in a little bit more. That's a little better. Yeah. Whoops. I just got moved. Correct. Zoom in tighter. Do you live in California or Florida? We live in Orlando, Florida, just out, just north of Orlando. Yeah, this is good. Cherie B says, wow, just stunning. Oh, thank you. Well, these, it's, you know, I, I'm a big advocate of saying for, you know, pushing the idea that it's not the tool, it's the artist. You know, a true artist can make anything, you know, you can use anything to, to uh, make a decent drawing. But I got to tell you, um, I'm giving a lot of credit to these pencils. These Mitsubishi pencils are awesome. I absolutely love them. But I want I wanted to also reiterate that when I, when I use these pencils, I am... Um, Facebook question. Oh, sorry. And I, uh, I'm also uh, using eraser. I'm using smudge tools. I'm using a lot of different things to create the effect. Go ahead, Nick. Oh, uh, is a tiger or lion the biggest of the big cats, Aaron? The biggest of the big cats is a uh, Siberian tiger. The Siberian tiger gets over 600 pounds. What are your thoughts on digital artwork? I love digital artwork. I, I teach digital artwork. To me, digital, it's just a different, it's another medium. You know, just like watercolor is different from oil painting, um, digital artwork is just a different medium. You're painting with light and pixels instead of pigment on paper. And, uh, and I think it's awesome. And you have plenty of instruction on digital as well as traditional. Yeah. My, on my website, creatureartteacher.com, I've got a lot of digital art instruction there. I've got a lot of traditional art instruction there. I'm kind of lucky. I feel like I'm lucky that I, I kind of grew up and, uh, in the age that I did, because there was no such thing as digital when I started learning to uh, create art. It was all traditional work. And so when digital did come about 25 years ago, 30 years ago, um, I, I came into it about, oh, about 15 years ago, I guess. Um, I was able to take a lot of my traditional knowledge and apply it to uh, digital work and so it really i feel like it gave me a leg up the, the funny thing about digital work and traditional work is that um one one informs the other they they both make you each one makes you better in the other i should say it that way you know my my traditional work made me better made me a better digital painter and my digital painting freed me up in my traditional work and, and got me more experimental so it was kind of cool do you draw athletes no Manny I draw people. Yeah, Manny draws. Manny draws all the UFC fighters. All the he, UFC he fighters, yeah. Jim Jackson, my good friend Jim Jackson, he draws athletes. Where did you purchase those pencils? I bought them online. If you if you type in, uh, if you do a search on Mitsubishi uh, Uni 10B, Mitsubishi 10B, um, I can't remember the company I bought them from, I, but I did get them just through a search. Just, just Google it, and but you'll get a lot of choices. Someone before said on Amazon Prime they're super expensive, but you could. There's Blick Art Store. Yeah, Blick, Blick. Um, what's yeah. the F, the one down here? The that just has to do with whether they're in and out of stock or not, because sometimes those prices oh, okay. fluctuate a lot. But yeah, I think. Matter of fact, I think I got these through through uh, Amazon? Amazon. Yeah. What was your favorite project uh, you worked on? Uh, there's three of them. There's Beauty and the Beast. Uh, was the first out of those, uh, then the Lion King, um, and then and, and don't get me wrong, I loved all the projects I worked on at Disney. 
Um, I loved my time at Disney and I loved all the projects. But then uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast, The Lion King, and then Brother Bear, because that was my first directing gig. And, it, you know, it wasn't as commercially successful as the others, but I really enjoyed creating it or being a part of creating it because it definitely takes a crew. We, it was a, a really great crew of people. We were all, you know, we've been friends for years and years and years of people that made that movie. And uh, it's, it's sort of like making a, a big project like that with your family. That's Anastasia like. on Facebook asks, what's the most memorable thing uh, that jumps out at you when you started working for Disney? Uh, the amount of, the amount of, the amount that I learned, um, in such a short amount of time, I learned so much from an artistic standpoint compared to my college years. Um, it was incredible. Every day was a huge artistic learning experience. And, uh, I just absolutely loved it. On TikTok, um, I, we get this question a lot about art block. Yeah. And what do you do to push through and get motivated to draw? Yeah. Um, I, there's several things you can do, you know, because I love to do nature art. Um, if I have an art block, I don't know what I want to do. I'll sit down and watch nature documentaries. I'll go, I'll take a walk. I live right in the, um, I live on a, a 31,000 acre wildlife refuge. I'll go out and, you know, take a hike. Um, any number of things, anything that's going to spark you know, it's going to spark my my creative thinking. And then then it's just a matter of going back and just starting to draw. And that's another technique that I use is just just start drawing. You don't even have to have something in mind to draw. Just start. Twitch question. I may be misremembering, but didn't you also work on Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I didn't work on Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I worked on several Roger Rabbit short cartoons. I worked on Tummy, uh, not Tummy Troll. I worked on Roller Coaster Rabbit where Roger goes to the carnival. And then I worked on Trail Mix-Up, where he is in the great outdoors. But I didn't actually work on the film, the, the full-length feature. Didn't you direct How to Haunt a House? I did direct How to Haunt a House, yeah. Yes, that's on YouTube. That's, a, that was, that's actually the first production, uh, first thing I, I ever directed. Yeah. Which, um, or what paper are you using, please? This is just, this is animation paper. It's 22 pound um, animation paper. I like to draw on it because it's obviously made for drawing. It's got a little bit of tooth, but it's it's also very smooth. And uh, it just takes, it takes the graphite really, really well, as you can, as you can see. And uh, so I just love drawing with it. Can you show the reference one more time? Yeah, here's my reference right there. Okay, there you go. Right there and there. Trying to show it to both. We're 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 uh, streaming on TikTok as well, so we have a couple of different feeds. So I'm trying to make sure I'm showing all the cameras. Thank you. But this is a little. It's little lion cub. It was a very hot day. This is in the middle of the day, and we saw this cub down in uh, kind of down in this ditch in the shade, and uh, they're hanging out with the older with the older lion lionesses. Is your animation peg bar Acme size or Disney size? Disney size. I never, this, knew, I never knew there was a difference. Yeah, there's a difference. So this is, yeah, this whole disc is Disney. Why would they have a different peg bar size? Uh, because it's Disney. Um, I have a question. How, how do you get into your line of work? I've been drawing for 30 years, college and high school and for fun. So how do I get into this line of work? This line of work, well... I'm, you have to be more specific. I'm assuming you might be in animation. Um, I don't do I don't do animation in the same way that I did back in the day. I was working for Disney and I did that, and that was one of the upsides of college. This is something else that I forgot to mention. We were talking about this the other night. Um, one of the other upsides to college, it's still to me sketchy as to whether it's worth the, the amount of money, but college does help you get placed. You know, a lot of people will find jobs because they happen to be at a school where a certain company will recruit from. And so that does help. But that doesn't stop people from, you know, submitting their work online, you know, that learn themselves. We had a lot of people at Disney that, that were able to do that. But as far as, you know, the way I got into this was I, I submitted a portfolio uh, back in uh, 1988. 1988, I submitted my portfolio. And... Um, uh, to an internship program that Disney was recruiting for. 
and I got in. And so they taught me that summer, they taught me animation and uh, I went into it already knowing how to draw. And uh, so they taught me animation and um, at the end of the six week internship, they hired me and uh, I had a year of school left. I went to school and then started out in April 17th, 1989 was my first day at Disney and that's that the rest is history. So what digital software is this? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The question is actually what digital animation software is the best? Well, I use TV Paint, but I'm I'm coming to realize I'm I'm always such a staunch uh, I'm very stubborn when it comes to using uh other software and I really love TV Paint. I know it's expensive, but for what I do, um it's it's just the best. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that can't afford it. I recently kind of begrudgingly just tried some some free software to, to uh, do some digital drawing and painting, uh, Krita. And I actually really loved it a lot more than I thought. And I discovered that Krita is also, uh, they also do animation. I have yet to try it. But if you're someone that's just kind of dabbling in animation and you don't want to spend the $700 or $600 or whatever it might be for TV paint, Krita is probably a good option. I just haven't, I haven't animated any. Another option would be Procreate if you're just doing, looking oh, yeah, at yeah, Procreate. Yeah, small sorry. animation as well. <laughs> if you, you have yeah, an sorry. That's for iPad, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I have animated in Procreate and I enjoyed that. So to follow up on the other question, um, putting a portfolio together would be the first step. Right? Absolutely. Or whatever. But the whole por portfolio has to be specific to the job you're trying to get. Correct. Yep, you got to put together a portfolio and it's got to be specific to the job that you're trying to get. Exactly. Uh, uh, Facebook question. Oh, just scroll away. Hold on. Uh, did, uh, did Fred Moore and Bill Titla design and animate uh, the dwarves in Snow White, Darren? That I don't know. I know Freddie Moore did a lot of the, you know, like in the, uh, oh, what was the one that had all of the little centaurs in it and and Bacchus, the wine, you know, that, that section of the, of, of Fantasia. Uh, Fantasia, he designed all of them. Um, he tended, he did all the, all the dwarves. Um, he tended to be, uh, you know, his designs were round and squishy and kind of fun. Well, Bill Taylor also did the big, um, the bu night on bald mountain. Yeah. Yeah. The big devil coming out there. Uh, Jenny on Facebook says clip studio is great. Also, by the way, you should try that. Yes. Now, actually, I plan on doing it. Actually, the reason I did this the other day is I wanted to see what other people were using. And so as I was laying in bed before I got out, I, as I do, I kind of was surfing the Internet and wanted to, trying to decide what I was going to do for the day. And so I wanted to see what other people were using so I could try it out. And maybe, you know, just see what it was all about. Uh, YouTube, Clip Studio is definitely one of those. YouTube comment on Krita. Krita is excellent software for art, for sure. It's good for 2D animation as well, but the frame rate of the playback is very slow. So I wonder if that's software specific or, or computer specific. So it'll be interesting to see. And then uh, YouTube comment, someone says Clip Studio is actually amazing for animation. So we'll have to definitely give those both a whirl. Maybe we'll do a head-to-head -head competition. Yeah, there you go. I'll do a little, I'll do a little, yeah, that, that actually be a lot of fun. It'd be kind of fun to take the same scene and figure out if you can get the same look or a better look or whatever, you know. Yeah. How would, software. how would aspiring artists contact you for advice? Well, right now we don't have, we don't have, we, we're not offering that right now um, other than what we're doing here um, because we literally have thousands and thousands of people that want to do that. And I just do not have the ability to answer everybody. So uh, unfortunately I have to err on, not answering anybody for until we do, you know, except for doing stuff like this. We do currently have some stuff in the works, though, where we're trying to get myself and some of our other instructors together where we can start doing things like that. And so speaking, stay tuned, stay tuned, and we'll, we'll, we'll be talking more about Speaking of it. which, I didn't get to mention this at the top of the stream because I was dealing with the sound issues. But as you alluded to, Aaron, uh, we've got some exciting news. Uh, next week, we're going to be going into full production on Snow Bear. And we're going to be sharing that process uh, with members of our website. Uh, I've got the slide up for our membership sale right now. Uh, both of our memberships, we offer two memberships. We offer a monthly streaming plan and an annual plan. 
Uh, the difference between those two is that the monthly streaming plan works just like Netflix. You get access to the courses for streaming and you can stop and start at any time. The annual plan gets you everything on the site, all the brushes, all the courses to download and keep as well as stream plus everything we release over the next year. So it's, it's, we like to call it the best value in art education, but we're making both memberships even better. So starting next week, we are gonna be rolling out something we've been asked about a lot. And this actually goes to what Aaron was just talking about with feedback. We're gonna be rolling out an official Discord channel for annual and streaming members. So that should launch next Friday. That's the goal right now. Um, and from time to time, uh, our instructors might be dropping in there and providing feedback. Uh, it's also geared towards being a place where the art community <clears throat> that we've uh, created, our students, can provide one another with feedback. So it's going to be sort of a centralized place where uh, Creature Art Teacher annual and monthly streaming members can share their artwork, provide feedback to one another. They can also, we've set up channels for all of the courses so you can share your work from each individual course and get feedback for that as you're learning. Uh, so that should be launching next week. And as Aaron is working on Snow Bear, we're going to be doing some exclusive streams uh, for annual and streaming members pretty much on a weekly basis, yeah, if that's, not more. That's what I'm super excited about. It's going to be basically like you sitting in the studio with me as I'm working. And um, and so it's it's going to be really fun to share that because... Basically, every morning I come into work, uh, you're going to be there with me if you want to be there. And, you know, you can ask questions and I can sometimes I won't be able to answer questions, but you'll be able to sit there, you know, and basically look over my shoulder and just, you know, see what it takes to make an animated short. That's what I'm going to be doing every day. Uh, will that uh, snow bear animation be in 30 or 60 frames per second? It'll be 24 frames per second. It'll be neither. That's right. <laughs> um. And also, I want to remind people that may have joined late, we have a brand new course up for pre-order over at Creature Art Teacher. Uh, Aaron's been working hard on it over the last couple of weeks. It's a creature design drawing course. It's 50% off uh, pre-order right now, and it comes out July 9th. So that's two weeks away. So if you head over to creatureartteacher.com uh, and go to the tutorials section, you'll see it right at the top of the page. You can go ahead and pre-order that now for 50% off. And after this stream, there's going to be a two-hour preview of that course available to everybody on YouTube. But if you go to the site now, you can watch it on the page. So it's there, ready to be watched. Um, and we've also got a brand new course that came out a week or two ago from Jenny Medved, which is a watercolor portrait painting course, uh, which is still available and on sale uh, for a discounted price. We definitely want you to check that out because it's a great course. Yeah. Follow show. And for the people on TikTok that couldn't see any of those slides, sorry. But they... Yeah, so for TikTok, really quick, we just, just head over to the site, Creature Art Teacher. Um, there's dot, a, com. dot com. There's a preview of the new course, the creature design that's coming out, um, and a plenty of other stuff. Do you have a course on portfolios or what makes a great portfolio? No. That I do have a video on YouTube where I went over that. Um, it's kind of buried in, you know, the history of my YouTube channel. That's something we, we can pull out. And actually, that's something we should talk about. I feel like you and Nick would be great. I think, we should, I think that's something We've we talked should about talk that. about doing. It's kind of on our project board. So I think that you could safely say that will be coming in the future. We've also got some ideas about the business side of art that we might do some courses on as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to work towards that for sure. Do you have any advice? for making smooth transitions in, in animation, um, like the movement to make things smoother? Yeah, it's it's using sm slow ins and slow outs. Slow ins, slow outs, and arcs. Always remember your arcs. And uh, it's that's basically it. If you can get your arcs right, your slow ins and slow outs right, you're 80% there. Uh, YouTube question, have you watched the movie Loving Vincent? What did you think about it? Did they I ask did, you to be a part of it by chance? I have not seen it. And uh, no, they didn't ask me. And I haven't seen it yet. I, I meant to, and I never was able to do it. Is there any chance of making a course with Claire Wendling? I love her art. 
So do I. Um, I Claire and I actually have worked together. I actually hired her for a, a film that I was working on called King of the Elves. And uh, she did some freelance for us, some freelance work. Um, She's on the list. She is definitely on the list. Do you agree or disagree that certain types of art are superior? Ergo, 2D versus 3D, or traditional versus digital, or realistic versus cartoony? No, I don't agree with that. So, there you go. That's my answer. I don't, I don't think, you know, every, every body of art can be great. It, you know, there's bad art, there's good art, and, it, and that, that works in every medium, but art is incredibly subjective subjective right you know some some person's great piece of art is another person's what they think is garbage it's the same with music right you know not everyone loves the same kind of music and so art in the same way that music is subjective is the same way what was your role in the lion king video game i saw your name in the credits i was one of the animators so i helped i didn't know my name was in the credits that's funny um, I was, I animated a lot of the movement of the characters. I did a lot of Simba kind of swinging through the trees and that sort of thing. Which is pretty much the main character animation in the game. Yeah. So, yeah, it was in between projects and, uh, the video game company, the division in our company, um, they figured if they could get the actual animators to work on it, it would be even better. And I think it, I did, I think it did come out better because of it. Who's saying true to your heart at the end of Mulan at the end of the credits era? <laughs> Was that Christina Aguilera? I know Christina Aguilera did one of the songs. Well, she did quite a I think she did a 98 degrees. Oh, true to your heart. That's the, I think that was 98 degrees. That's, was that the real poppy song? I think. Yeah, I think it was, that's the yeah, real. Yeah, it's 98 degrees, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that was the real poppy song. Yeah, because that's that's the where the ancestors start dancing and everything. Uh, I just want to uh, on that question about traditional, non-traditional. I before I met Aaron, I really didn't think digital art was valid. I didn't like three D. I didn't, and he's kind of maybe opened my eyes because you really you. You still have to have the skill to be for an artist to use digital. Exactly. Yeah. For me, it's it's all about, it's really about you know keeping an open mind and not forming an opinion about something that you don't really understand yet. And and I'm I'm notorious for doing stuff like that. And um, you know it's it, we just you know it just every every medium has has a has been a validity. Does 3D animation follow the same rules as 2D. Yes. Generally speaking. Yeah. yeah, it's really just a different tool. But in general, if you're talking about the fundamentals of animation, um, pretty much if you're looking at Disney style, uh, full you know character animation, it's all basically the same. It's all the same fundamentals. A uh, YouTube question. Um, I struggle with perspective, especially when it comes to the muzzle. Any advice? Um, think of it, break down the simple sh to, to simple shapes. Break it down to simple shapes when you're talking about a muzzle. You know, look at this. I'm being ambidextrous. Um, I'm, I'm being ambidextrous. <laughs> um, you know, think of, uh, let me grab another piece of paper here. I'll show you. You know, when you're talking about the muzzle of an animal, if we look at it in profile, depending on what kind of animal it is, you know, you've got a dog like this, kind of got a little break in the nose there and the nose itself, like so. Okay, there, we, there we've got a dog. Now think about the perspective. How does that sit? So if we want to change the angle, you know, let's bring the, the center line down around this way. And now here's our forehead, there's our forehead there. Now the bridge of the nose is here and it's going to be foreshortened, right? So it's going to come out and now the nose goes this way and comes out, comes this way. And here's our muzzle coming down like that. You think about, 
Think about perspective. Think about how that's going to turn in space. So today you're not animating, but you're doing a drawing. Pencil yep. Drawing. Today I'm just just drawing. What I'm doing right now is I got a piece of tissue paper and I'm kind of just evening out the tone on the cat. And then what I can do with my eraser, see, I can come in and kind of smudge right up to the edge, like so. And then I can go in with my eraser, and this is, this is actually my eraser. This is a, a gum eraser, a kneaded eraser. And I can come in with it and pinch it, you know, to a little edge. And I can come in and create little hairs right here. This is how I'm going to be able to create the, the, um, the whiskers. I'm going to do that later. I just go in very, very gently and pull out the, the hair. What yeah. makes a good artist? Open mind. Uh, discipline. You're blocking the uh, drawing a little bit, Aaron, just so you know. Your head. My head? Like, is that better? Yeah, yeah, you're fine now. You were just leaning in. You know, an open mind, experimentation, um, seeing the world for, you know, for all, all the beauty that it has to offer. I think that's a big part of it. Um it really is, you know, I, I really feel like a, as an artist, it's up to us, really our job. If you want to consider, you know, you having a job that serves other people, I think as an artist, it's our, our job to get people to see the world in different ways, right? To see the beauty, to see the horror, to see the, the comedy, to see whatever. I can't believe we haven't thought of this, but this is a really good question. Is there a course on graphite drawing? I like using graphite, but I don't really know what the possibilities and limitations are. It's actually funny because I um, I was going to bring that up to you the other day because after I started doing my drawing, I realized we didn't have one and I want to do one. So, yeah, I'm going to do a, a, a course on graphite drawing. Uh, real quick, uh, one of the reasons that Aaron is doing this drawing today is that starting next week, uh, the date's to be announced, but it's going to be next week. Uh, we're going to be holding a art auction of Aaron's original artwork. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff that's going to be in that auction, including this image here. Uh, we did one a year ago, so I think we're going to go ahead and make this an annual thing going forward. And uh, or more, <laughs> or more. Yeah, we'll see. Hey, man, uh, I got to pay my mortgage. <laughs> But uh, if you are interested in owning a piece of Aaron Blaze original artwork, including this drawing right here, uh, head over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and join our mailing list because that'll be the first place to learn about the auction. We'll, we'll post it on all the social medias as well. But uh, Aaron, if you want, I, I pulled out some of the other stuff that's going to be available. Maybe we should show some of it real quick. Yeah, that's fine. Um, one of the things I'm really excited about is for the first time ever, we're going to be auctioning off actual sets of animation. Uh, stuff that Aaron's done on past live streams or demos. Um, and we've never done that before. We're not breaking them up, so you're going to get the entire sequence of drawings. So Yeah, uh, I'm not going to sell individual animation drawings. So don't ask for that because I've had a lot of people asking, hey, can you sell us some individual drawings for that? No, the only way you're going to get them is, is buying the whole thing because I really want to keep them together so you can get it. So whoever buys it gets to have an entire animated shot. So for instance... Here is one of the items. Yeah, this is this is a big one, actually. This is one of the bigger ones. This is a, a demo that I did, um, a dog trot demo. And uh, can you hold this for a second, Dan? Mm -hmm. Thanks. So this is a dog trot demo. And so I, uh, I've got an entire, it's, this will be really handy for students out there, but it's the entire uh, all on ones. Uh, animation of a dog trot and you know all the anatomy and how it works and I did the whole thing as a uh, as a lecture 
And uh, this one, I, I really like this one. I thought it came out pretty well. And I like the keys, too. So, so there's some, I think there's some nice drawings in here. And I think you guys, uh, whoever gets it, will enjoy it. Uh, but this one's got quite a few drawings in it. I think it's got, I wish I had, uh, I don't know, 20 drawings, something like that. And then here's a really cool one that I think people will be very interested in. Oh, yeah. I did a little demo the other week, uh, not too long ago. TikTok? On TikTok. Yeah, this was one that I did where I was um, demoing uh, Nala, doing a Nala head turn. And um, and so I, and I created Nala and the Lion King. But here you can see her kind of looking up. And it's 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 not, it's she she's a little bit off model. I haven't drawn her in about 20 years, <laughs> other than like doing little signing people's books and stuff. But um, but you can see the head turn and and I, I like the way this one came out, so I wanted to get this one out out there as a as a piece as well. Here's another demo that I did. This is a charcoal demo that I did, and uh, I don't know how much of this you guys can see, uh, but um, this one was a lot of fun. We've actually got prints of this one, so there's a, there's a few people. Perfect. So this was um, this was done as a charcoal demo, and this was also done as prints. And so there's a lot of people out there that have prints to this image, but no one has the original other than me. And whoever buys it will, uh, I won't even have it anymore. Artist formerly known as prints. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. And then basically some more images, kind of along the lines of what you're doing today. Yeah, so I've got more stuff. I don't know how much glare there might so the be. Gonna be soon, some more pencil next drawings. Week. Next week. Okay. Awesome. Pencil drawings. Let's go back to this one. Yeah. Once you get back to And I've got, you know, giant watercolors that will be available, which we can't show. But um, So there you go. public appearances i do matter of fact we just got back we just got back from uh spending a month in europe where we did a lot of lectures and i did some uh expos some con uh, some uh um you were able to meet a lot of your students yeah martin Berger. martin there. Berger. yes sorry i got i was trying I'm to thinking. get the pencil i was, I'm I was thinking i'm thinking <laughs> Did you ever get to meet any of the nine old men, Frank or Ollie, maybe? Yes, I've met both Frank and Ollie. I met Ward Kimball. Uh, I met quite a few of them. Um, are you going to be at any other public appearance, like um, Lightbox? Yes. CTN? We're going to be at Lightbox and CTN. Well, definitely Lightbox right now. We're not sure what's going on with CTN. But we'll be at Lightbox October 14th, 15th, and 16th. That's in Pasadena, California. And I think at Lightbox Expo, um, there's a site where you can get tickets and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Everything. And do you ever do live workshops? Yes. Matter of fact, we've got one coming up in uh, early November. Right here in our backyard, I'm going to be teaching Ronnie Williford and myself uh, at Wekaiva State Park. We're going to be teaching on location, plain air, watercolor painting. Which is only 30 minutes from Disney World, by the way. So Yeah, uh, right here in Orlando. So uh, we don't have an official page for that yet. We will very soon. But yeah, if you're, if you're interested in early November, um, we will be teaching watercolor painting. Yeah, and that's going to be a cool one because it's actually a campsite. So we're going to have cabins and we're going to have food and we're going to all get to spend basically a week in the woods together drawing and painting. So we'll have a lot more information on that really yeah. soon. Yeah, awesome. And it's going to be in November, so it'll it'll be warm, but it's not going to be unbearably hot. Right. Those watercolors will dry quick. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? I Just real quick before I forget. Yeah. Um, I know you got questions coming through, but we, I, I just want, I, I wanted to tell everybody about the big, big drama that we had here at our home the last couple days. We had this full grown male black bear, poor guy had gotten hit by a car and, um, 
he was uh, he, he wasn't dead. He was injured, and he kind of took up residence and hunkered down and hid right in our backyard. He was there for a couple of days, and uh, before he finally moved off, and uh, we had some wildlife officials come out to see if they could, you know, to assess the situation. But he, you know, before they could do anything, he took off and was gone into the woods. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty dramatic. Vedanta got some pretty amazing video of the poor guy. Are you okay? Oh, he's hurt. He has a hurt arm. It's okay. Phoenix underscore eighty seven said, "I just saw you on Disney Plus Sketchbook." No. Arm. Unless they unless they put an old video of me on there. Oh, that's cool. Because he said, "I just saw you on Disney Plus Sketchbook." We'll have to look that up. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't even know I was on Disney Plus Sketchbook. Yeah, so I'm showing right now to people that are, unfortunately, the TikTok okay. people won't be able to see this, but I'm showing the bear, um, the footage of the bear, the poor guy. Yeah, he was pretty hurt. Nick actually had a bear come into his yard last year that um, he, was, he straight up just had three legs. He was missing his entire front right leg. Are you okay? We get a lot of bears, right? Area. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Realize that, he has uh, a good arm. Florida is. Uh, it's okay. As many hey, bears as it know. does, but there's several thousand black bears in Florida. Yeah, actually, I just looked it up the other day. There's a little over four thousand black arm. bears in Florida. Oh. Uh, estimates, obviously, and that can vary this widely. Big boy. Who knows? That's their estimate, but yeah, he's um, got a I've seen at least five of them. Yeah, His exactly. His front paw is hurt. Do, pre do people frequently stop like, you on the street? Some. He's no. right there. Like, he's right. right no, I've I've had it happen a couple of times, but not very often. In, no. I remember in um, Orange, Orange City, Orange City, we went to a Mexican restaurant, and a guy sitting at a table is like Aaron Blaze. Yeah. So occasionally, and then we were in Saratoga yeah. one time, and somebody at Marina Jacks was like, "I don't know, Aaron Blaze." Yeah, yeah. So a couple, of, yeah, it happens sometimes. Sometimes, not very often. It's a small, it's a small little world I occupy. It's happened twice in a whole five years, so. That's right. But when we're at um, events at like or like CTN, like books, I mean, a ton of people recognize you. Yeah, at CTN that's or something, something that's made. something that's animation specific. Yeah. It's. Any tips on how to draw a human skull? Yes, get a human skull and look at it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, there's a lot that goes into drawing a human skull as far as proportion and all kinds of things. So it's, it's learning those proportions. There's tons of online uh, information out there you know, to, for that kind of thing too. Um, so I would recommend you know, looking online but yeah, with a human skull, there's a lot. I'd have to take it. That's a whole other lesson. That's a couple of hour lesson right there for me to teach you. But it certainly is cool to do. When everything's falling off. Phoenix eighty seven says you were drawing Simba and talking about being denied by them three times until Cal Arts picked you up. That was Mark Han. Yeah, that oh, was Mark Henn. That wasn't that, me. I was, yeah, okay. So that's Mark Henn. Yeah, so Mark went to Cal. I never went to Cal Arts. Didn't do Simba. No, and Mark is still at Disney. That's why I was confused because they were only using people that are still with that you. are still at Disney for for uh, what's the name of the show? Sketchbook. 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 Yeah. Mark and I look nothing alike, so I don't know how you got that. <laughs> well, your face isn't in the, in the shot. Today. Yeah, if this is someone on TikTok. Yeah, this is TikTok. They can't, oh, they can't gotcha. I just assumed they knew what I looked like. Nope. Aaron always and assumes. You, Everyone knows your, who he yeah, is. Yeah, I'm making an ass out of you and me. And your profile pic is a, is a tiger. So. Hey, tiger. Hey, my man. Uh, CJ on YouTube says, hey, Aaron, I haven't drawn in a few months because I'm having a big artist block due to being very critical on myself. And I feel like giving up a lot. How do I overcome that? Stop it. Stop it. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Do it because you love it. 
Drawing is fun. Drawing doesn't have to be stressful. Drawing and art. And yeah, it's easy to say that, but don't be afraid to make bad drawings. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Stop comparing. We live in, especially with this freaking internet world that we live in that I hate so much um, because people compare themselves to so many other people. Stop doing that. Compare yourself to you. You know, try to Try to do better than you did last week. Try to do better than you did last year. You know, try to do better than the day the, the day before. But stop comparing yourself to other people. That's another big one. Because that really contributes to people just getting frustrated. Because they're not being able to do, they're not, you know, as, they're not as talented as this person. Or they're not as skinny as this other person. Or they're not as pretty or handsome as this other person. And it, it's, it drives me freaking crazy. JB Inc. says inspirational poster. Stop it, Aaron Blake. Yeah, 2022. Just stop it. And I, I just want to add my own two cents. We should totally make that poster. Stop it. Um, <laughs> just you drawing makes pointing you... at the camera. Stop, stop it. Stop Sorry. It. If drawing makes you miserable, maybe don't draw. Yeah. Too. Like if, you, if something's making you like unhappy, maybe that's not, maybe it's not your thing. Maybe you should, I mean, yeah. my two cents. Drawing, or, drawing. Or there's nothing wrong with taking a break either. You know, I mean, t draw when you feel inspired to draw, not because you feel you have to draw. Yes, also, that's a huge one. You should also realize that progress in your art, even when you compare yourself to yourself, can sometimes feel like it's going at a glacial pace. Hey, look, I'm I've been drawing for 50 years and I still get frustrated with myself, you know, because I'll I'll look at work that I did five years ago and go dang, I haven't improved at all, you know, I, or, I'm, or dang, my art was better five years ago, you know, or something like that. It just might be, it, it could always be, you know, you had a good day, you had a bad day, you're having a bad day, or you're having a good day, or whatever. Growth typically comes in plateaus also. So you, yeah. you, you might find yourself stuck on one plateau for a long time. Which you may told... find yourself. Yeah. How did I get here? Uh, <laughs> but seriously, you, you might find that you're, you feel stuck at one level for a long time, and that's perfectly normal. Everybody goes through this. And sometimes your growth is a steady, gradual incline, and sometimes it's big jumps. Like, you know, you can look back all of a sudden and go, wow, I, all this art feels the same, but then all of a sudden something changed and now I'm at a, at a whole new plateau level. It's more like, it can be like steps. Exactly. So, yeah, you break through, something clicks. Yep. It's like that muscle memory kicks in. But the key is to do it because you love it and just stick to it. Don't get frustrated. Don't get, or as my father says, don't get frustrated. Flustrated. Flustrated. With my microfine glass. Yes, when he's, while he's using his microfine glass. Dad, I don't think that means what you think it means. And actually, somebody uh, uh, mentions that uh, ha Hakusai painted, the, which is the, the, the very famous uh, Japanese wave painting. He painted the Great Wave in his 70s. And yeah. most of his famous art came after that. So, you know, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no everybody's... Uh, and which which goes to different. which goes to answer another question. Am I too old to start doing art? That I, I get that question a lot too. No, you're not. You're never too old. Uh, Zanji on Facebook says, speaking of the talking heads, they actually went to art school and instead formed a band. Yeah, they went to Rhode Island School of Art and Design. Yep. Where I almost went. Yeah. It was between Rhode Island, Savannah, and Ringling for me. Those were my three top choices. Rhode Island's a good school. Yeah, it's a really good school. I just want to piggyback real quick off of the art. Um, everyone has their own art journey. Yes. Like, for me personally. For me. For me. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't read. I, I, know, it's okay. <laughs> I always felt like if I did it, if I pursued it professionally, I'd lose my my passion for it. You know what I mean? Like, every not everybody has to be a professional artist. You yeah. can still do art in your life and love it and do it to do it. Yeah. You know, not everyone's going to take that professional path. So that's just my yep you're no you're right and, and to the contrary i or or to your point rather not to the contrary i know a lot of people that have switched you know tried to pursue it as a career and driven their love of art into the ground as a result you know so there's something to be said for keeping your passions your passions 
if, you know, if you want. Um, this is maybe for someone, uh, it's Tamara's Crusty Toes. Crusty Toes. <laughs> Have you ever tried digital art, Aaron? Oh, yeah. I, most of, actually, most of the art that I do nowadays is, is digital. Check out some of his work. Um, Go to CreatureArtTeacher.com. CreatureArtTeacher.com. Or my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel. Speaking of which, we and are subscribe. currently running a uh, summer sale over at Creature Art Teacher, uh, where everything on the website is 30% off or more. A lot of it's 40%, 50% off. Um, uh, storyboarding courses, animation courses, brush sets, drawing costume figures and painting, visual development with Armand Serrano, courses by David Coleman, Jenny Medved. They're all on sale right now. And um, it's a great time to pick something up. Uh, I've got a slide of an alligator up for our summer sale. I don't, I don't know if you've seen that yet. But, uh, I haven't. It's great summer base. And this is a very broad question from TikTok. Do artists get paid well when they're just starting out? It depends. Um, you don't get paid well in any industry when you're just starting out in general. Sure, there's other ones that pay a little better than others. But but um, but no, you work you work towards that. And first of all... Going into art for the money, quit. That's not why you go into art. Because if you go into art for the money, you're going to be disappointed. If you keep working towards it, the money will come. But to go into money, to, but to go into art for the money, um, generally is a very bad idea. I feel like that's with any career. Yeah, I agree with that. Don't ch that was one, some of the best advice my stepfather ever gave me, which was you know don't chase the dollar. Do what do what you love, and the dollar will 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 be there. Unless maybe you're trying to be a hedge fund manager, in which case, yeah, that's all about. Stop it. <laughs> Once uh, again, my, our poster. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, Lewis on YouTube says, "Aaron, your wolf and cat courses have helped me progress with my thylacine drawings. Very grateful. Thank you. When are you coming to Tasmania? Oh, next week. <laughs> <laughs> Not next week, but." <laughs> No, but it's, I think it's funny. When are you coming to the other side of the world? Isn't that no, we are going to go to. No, we're going to. We're Procreate definitely going to go. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm making fun of you. I shouldn't be. <laughs> Procreate is there, right? Yeah, Procreate's there. Yeah, yeah. No, but we we definitely it's on our list. And uh, actually, that whole part of the world, Tasmania, Australia, New Zealand, that's um, we haven't been able to get down there yet. Um, Nick and I have basically been everywhere else, all over Asia, South America, Mexico, Canada, uh, and Europe. And uh, so, you know, I want to I want to get back to I want to get to uh, the Pacific, South Pacific, Australia, New Zealand. But I also want to get out to India. Um, you know, I was in India years and years ago, but I'd like to go back uh, with the intention of you know speaking and teaching. How hard was it for you um, to get hired at Disney? Uh, it was yeah, it was a different time. This was back in the eighties. It's different now. I think it's harder now than it was back then. There were less people trying to get into Disney back then than there are now. Um, you got to realize when I got into animation, animation wasn't really a thing. Some people were into it, uh, but Disney, you know, when I was in high school and, and going into college, Disney was thinking about shutting down their, their entire animation studio because it just wasn't making any money. Uh, you know, this is back in 1984. And, uh, Michael Eisner was interested in shutting it down, and uh, it was Roy Disney that kind of saved it, and uh, and you know turned it around, and so imagine I know changed everything, changed everything. Imagine no '90s because animation revival. Disney Disney's revitalization during the late '80s and early '90s. That opened up the door for every other studio to become what they became. So DreamWorks wouldn't be here. Blue Sky, Pixar, none of them would, would be here. It'd just be me as I. Yeah, true. Yeah. Can't see how that translates. Do you use any 3D software for your 3D animation? I don't. I don't use 3D soft. Whoops, sorry about that, guys. I don't use 3D software. Um, I just never learned it.
So I'm just putting some finishing touches on. I got to get the whiskers in here in a second. The whiskers are going to be a little bit of an issue because I kind of ground the graphite into the paper a little bit. And then I got to get the, my eraser razor edge sharp. To What about like a piece of white content or something? Would that maybe too much? it's yeah, it'd be too much. And it's a different color. It's way. a different color. Yeah. But I just need to have an indication. Oh, that works. I just got to go slow with it. With every breath I take, every breath you take, I got to just slowly pull it across. Amazing. Amazing. Beautiful. <laughs> See, you can draw with an eraser. Look at that, folks. But yeah, you didn't know that. I think this is someone that came to the stream, stream late. I saw that you tried Krita for the first time. What did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? I loved it. Watch the video. I put a video on YouTube. I think that's how they know. Um, well, in the video, I talk about how much I love it. So uh, I really enjoyed it. And it was super, super intuitive. I was nervous that I wouldn't under, you know, because it's a new piece of software. But it was, it was just, it was, it was super, you know, wasn't much different than every other in Photoshop. What I was with, what you know, I'm used to, and Painter. It felt like a really good blend of Painter and Photoshop. Can you make a video on how to draw a human skull? Uh, you have a full course on drawing. I've got anatomy. an entire course on human anatomy, including skulls, on my website at creatureartteacher.com. I believe that course is 30 or 40% off right now. So. There we go. I don't know if my head's getting in the way, but I'm going to have to... You got to tilt over a little bit you're, so I can see. You're good right there. You can see the top of your head, but it's not blocking enough. Looks like TikTok's winding down a little bit. Yep, I'm. Well, I'm winding down too. So we're gonna finish this up. So there's our little our little lion cub, in celebration of the 28th anniversary. Was this day not? I think it was this day. Uh, can you look that up, Nick? Sure. What was the release date of The Lion King in 1994? I think it may have been the 24th, but I can't remember. June 24th, 1994. Yeah, so today's the day. So, in celebration of the release of The Lion King, which I worked on, I worked on the original way back in the day, I thought I'd do a little lion cub drawing. Uh, Twitch question, what do you think is the most underrated Disney animated film? Brother Bear. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's so underrated. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard from my point of view because... I know a lot of people say Treasure Planet. Oh, uh, yeah, without a doubt. I love Treasure Planet. Did you read that supposedly The Rock is going to be in the live action Treasure Planet? They're making it a live-action Treasure Planet. That's what they said. Well, there you go. You think they'd ever? Do Is they're going to make Brother Bear? Yes. I, I I don't know. I think they will because they're going to do all of them. Why wouldn't they? Until they stop making money. <laughs> which will probably be the Brother Bear. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say which will probably be Brother Bear. <laughs> like, well... Thanks a lot, Aaron Blaze. Yeah. Aww. So there we go. There's our little lion cub. Uh, Julia on YouTube says, my mother is 80 years old and she follows you and watches your live streams and looks up to you. She's sending you all her best wishes Aww. to always have a long, happy, healthy life. Oh, thank you so much. Well, my father, in uh, just a couple of weeks, he turns 83. He lives with us and uh, he can still drink me under the table, too. Um, and for those who didn't know, you directed Brother Bear. Yes, yes I directed. I, I co-directed. Bob Walker 
and myself directed Brother Bear. Here we go. Uh, no Parking Barry on YouTube says, my pick for the most underrated Disney film is The Rescuers Down Under. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, Rescuers Down Under only did make, I think it only did like $27 million when it went into the theaters. But that was what year? That was uh, 1989 or 1990. I can't remember. Uh, Mermaid was 89, so it wasn't Rescuers was before that, wasn't it? Rescuers was after Mermaid. It was after? Yep. Really? There, the original Rescuers, Rescuers was 77, but the Rescuers Down Under was after Mermaid. Did not know that. Yep. Because I, I uh, the rescues down under was actually yeah, my, it was 90, my right. It was my first. That was my first uh, feature film I worked on. Was rescuers. Then, oh. then Beauty and the Beast. That's interesting. I just thought everything after Mermaid just kept going up and up and up. No, we had that. We had one dip, which was the rescuers down under. We all got pretty discouraged. Cohen clips on TikTok asks, have you heard that apparently they're planning to bring back 2D animation films to Disney? Yes, I did hear that. It makes me very excited. And they only have a few 2D animators still. Yeah, there's oh. it's Mark Henn, Eric Goldberg, uh, Alex Cooper Schmidt, Haycock. and Randy Haycock. Yeah. People on TikTok won't be able to see this, but if you uh, saw Aaron's previous live stream a couple of weeks ago, uh, he did an image of a lion uh, standing off with a uh, big bull elephant, and uh, it's called the standoff. And we decided we got a lot of interest, so we went ahead and made a limited edition signed and numbered print of that. Uh, there was only 100 printed, and we are down to, as of when we started the stream, uh, 15 left. So if you're interested in getting that, go ahead and head on over to creatureartteacher.com slash prints. Because uh, when they are gone, they are gone You're forever. Going to sign all those? Yep. Awesome. All right, folks. I'm pretty much there. So uh, just to recap, um, I've got my creature design course in pre-order right now. If you go over to creatureartteacher.com, um, that's going to be coming out in about two weeks. But you can order it now for 50% off. And, um, and hopefully you will enjoy it when it comes out because it's coming out really cool. I'm having a lot of fun, uh, you know, during the course, I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking a lot of time to teach real world anatomy, four legged creatures, bird anatomy, insect anatomy. And then we're taking that knowledge and creating our own creatures. We distort, distort the proportions, distort the, the body parts, that sort of thing, combine different body parts. And, uh, um, and we can create new creatures in that way. It's a sign. I, I also do a scientific approach, but also kind of a, a fantastical approach as well. Um, right now, if you go over to my YouTube channel, we've got a sneak peek of that uh, happening right after this. I just stream. published it. Oh, okay. So it just went out. Um, and you can see it on the website as well at creatureartteacher.com. Um, there's that. We've got our art auction coming up next week. That um, we're going to be giving you more information on that in the next week or so, and our Discord. That's uh, talk about that really quick. Again, yeah, so if you become a member to CreatureArtTeacher.com, and this is only going to be available to annual and monthly streaming members, uh, we're creating a desk. Uh, we've created our Discord channel. We're going to be launching it next week, and if you are an annual or monthly streaming member to our website. You'll be sent a link and be given automatic access to it. And it's going to be a great place for uh, our students and teachers and everybody to kind of share their work and provide feedback to one another. We're going to do some special live streams over there from time to time that are member only. Uh, and we're going to be doing like, you know, some uh, Q&A sessions with Aaron and the teachers as well. Uh, so consider picking up a membership. You can get our monthly streaming membership on a seven-day free trial and tech, check it out. Uh, you can get either membership for 30% off right now, which is gets you access. The annual membership gets you access right now. We are just about to 600 hours of art education and training materials. So if you head on over to creatureartteacher.com, you can check both of those out. Um, and the Discord will be launching next week, which you'll get access to. So, yeah, I'm actually really starting. I'm so excited. We've been working towards this for a long time. We're going to be starting actual production on Snow Bear, our animated short that we've been working on for the last six years. <laughs> if they remake Brother Bear, do you think you'll be a part of it? No. 
No, unfortunately, probably not. Not that you wouldn't if they asked you. I would definitely do it if they asked, but no, they've that that's that ship, you know, they they want they don't want people making the same movie over again. They they want a different film and fresh blood. Yeah. All right, folks. I'm just noodling this now. I hope you enjoyed it. There's our little lion cub uh, in celebration. Someone asked if there was a possibility that you could show it at the correct angle to the the over. Oh, to the cameras. To that camera. Yeah, is this camera? camera? Yes. Yeah, yeah, they they watched me work. I don't know if that's glaring or not. Down a little bit. Down here. Perfect. There you go. Awesome. So people are getting a good glimpse at it now. There it is. Yeah, TikTok's had the best view the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, you can do all kinds of stuff with graphite and pencil using your eraser smudge tools all kinds of stuff but uh go on out there and take what you've learned today and put some beauty back out into the world because especially today people are going to be hurting and uh we need some love out there so go out and make someone's life better and i will talk to you next friday have a great week you guys bye everybody thank you see you next time